the cup, the Holy Grail, Lloyd Stanley's mug. Whatever name it goes by, the Stanley Cup, the NHL's annual award for its world champion, is synonymous with excellence and one of the most well-known symbols in the world of sports. Except its winners aren't called world champions, and it doesn't belong to the NHL in the first place. What? This is what you don't know about the Stanley Cup. Welcome to What You Don't Know About Sports, where we delve into the forgotten stories, teams, and athletes of sports history and question widely held takes on today's sports. I'm Matt, and this is Blake. Hello. And today, we have a special topic, but an even more special person to talk about it with, one of our very best friends, Mr. Cody Stevens. Oh, that's me. What's up, guys? And girls, or whoever listens, everybody. Everybody. Uh, what, what what do you know about the Stanley Cup there, Cody? I know that it is silver, and it is big, and it is heavy, and that my Carolina Hurricanes and your Carolina Hurricanes, but not Blake's Carolina Hurricanes. Really, uh, they should be everyone's Carolina Hurricanes, if we're being honest. America's, yeah, sweet, America's sweethearts, the Carolina Hurricanes, have won it <laughs> once. Um. Yeah, and I know there's a bunch of fun traditions and, I guess, superstitions and stuff with it. And that's about the extent of my cup knowledge. That's it. Uh, have you ever Have you ever been around it? You ever seen it? I've done more than seen it there, Matt. I have... Hold on. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I actually got a chance to hold it when the All-Star game was in Raleigh forever ago, back when our team was not good, but somehow we won an All-Star game. <laughs> um, I just got to hold it and for you know I always like to say as a true Hurricanes fans I hate the Capitals and for the longest time but always bragged to my Capitals friends that hey you know y'all may have a better team but I've held more Stanley Cups than y'all have unfortunately now Ooh. they have held as many as they have but still now, now wait which one did you hold do you know I do not <gasps> the heavy one <laughs> 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 it's about 35 pounds right they're all uh, so there's so there's three right but you don't know which one i do not so i'm assuming the one that goes to the all-star game whatever one that is i'm gonna call him steve steve the stanley cup <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't flat stanley cup so that's good right thank goodness for that what are the three there's the presentation Stanley Cup, the one that they give the teams at the end of the season and so forth. There is the the permanent one that sits in the Hall of Fame, and then one other one. What's the third one? I think it's the bowl itself, like the actual original bowl that was used. The actual cup, I suppose the cup, uh, yes. you would say. I would bet that it was the presentation one, which I mean if it's if you're holding the Stanley Cup, that's that's holding the Stanley Cup. It doesn't matter. You're either holding the Hall of Fame one or the one the players hold. So, like, <laughs> either way, it's cool. I was just asking. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was definitely a cool experience. It was one of those things where we were standing in line the whole time. Like, we were there for like a good hour, hour and a half waiting in line for it. And, you know, you're like, I'm going to get there. I'm going to do this with it. I'm going to do this with it. And then you get up there and it's like, okay, take your picture. And then you're like, okay, bye. And it's like, oh, wait. <laughs> so, wait, did you get to like throw it over your head? I did not. I would not trust me to do that. Well, Zdeno Chara almost took his own head off. He just nicked the bill of his cap, the one that he, the cap that he was wearing. He <laughs> nicked that, and it went flying. He almost hit himself in the head. Did uh, did Marchand lick it? Ooh, that is a good question, and I would be willing to put money that yes, he did. Also, just yeah. a weird aside, throwback to y'all's last episode about uh, the unspoken rules and stuff about fighting people in hockey. Do you think he'd get in more trouble licking someone now in like a COVID world, or would it still be just a? Like, what would be the decorum for that? Oh, if you lick me, if you lick me, 
<laughs> like we are fighting probably until one of us is dead. I'm not <laughs> letting you just lick me <laughs> no, like, like right me, now. Two years ago, it was a cute, like, oh, that's so weird. I mean, he's an idiot, but whatever. And now I'd be like, are you trying to kill me? Like, how was the. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That's attempted murder at this point. <laughs> I think, I think that's fair. That was, that was peak, like not hygienic sports though like so marchand was licking people lance stevenson was walking around like blowing in lebron's face at the free throw line like people were just doing nasty things in in the mid 2010s whatever that decade's called the teens weird, i guess the, the 20 teens or just the teens well how many wrestling things have we watched they spit on somebody as part of the like the angle or the whatever and it's like you would never do that now yeah no, or they're spitting gonna... they're spitting in the ring yeah yeah <laughs> Anyway. Oh man! Anyway, back on track. Um, the we're going to talk about the Stanley Cup today, and the Stanley Cup is one of the most unique trophies in sports because, as we said in the intro, you would assume that it's like the NHLs to give out, uh, and that it's a World Championship trophy because the Lombardi Trophy for the NFL and the Commissioner's Trophy for baseball and the O'Brien Trophy for the NBA all are that way. But this one isn't. It's just really strange. It was created by the Governor General of Canada, which is a real thing, but they don't do anything. It's like the King and Queen of England, I guess. It's their appointee. So like a shout out thing. Yeah, shout out to Canada for still being part of the uh of the crown, I guess. But Howard. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it was commissioned by Lord Stanley Preston, which is the first thing I didn't know. That's his first name, not his last name. I thought it would be but, his last. Me too. Right? <laughs> yeah. So Lord Stanley Preston was his name. Uh, he commissioned it in 1892. He had moved to Canada to be the governor general. And his sons picked up the game of hockey. He became enamored with hockey. He wanted to help grow it. And so he did this. Uh, do either one of you want to take a guess on the price that he paid to get this kind of personalized cup? You said it was 1892? 1892. So you can give it to me in then <laughs> money or today money. Either way. Can I put it in Bitcoin for you? Uh, if you can I, do I, that I would, math, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I need to do some conversion, but yeah. Um, I would think about maybe sixty-ish dollars. Then, pretty that's, darn close. That's that's <laughs> actually not far that's off. A so great guess. The official price is ten guineas, uh, which is slang for ten and a half pounds, uh, which would have been forty-nine dollars and 85 cents in good american money the equivalent today is 1300 dollars 1385 dollars so 1385 uh which <laughs> all things being considered like this prestigious trophy only costing 1300 bucks is also not something i would have expected that's a stimulus check can you buy an actual hand <laughs> <laughs> he, he got his stimmy and he he bought a cup um <laughs> It can be described as a decorative punch bowl and or a rose bowl is really what he bought and gave it uh, inscribed the name of the cup. And it was official name was the Dominion Hockey Challenge Cup, because why give things simple names? You That's know what I'm not complicated at all. Dominion. Let's go play for the DHCC boys. Now, why is it uh, called the Challenge Cup, though? Because it it, it was passed around. It, it wasn't only used for one league, correct? Yes. Uh, multiple reasons for that Challenge Cup name. Um, I know we're all fr fans of uh, combat sports, whether they are real or scripted. Uh, so boxing, UFC, wrestling. Originally, the cup was intended to work as if it was a championship belt in one of those sports uh, it was a, a anybody could challenge for it um, the original rules were thus because they were written in 1892 so it has to be thus um, <laughs> <laughs> the winners shall return the cup in good order when required by the trustees so that it may be handed over to any other team which may win it so that's just nice housekeeping 
The winning team at its own expense must have or may have the club name and year engraved on a silver ring fitted on the cup because apparently they didn't have the forethought to think that it would take forever or be around (laughs) forever. Number three, the cup shall remain a challenge cup and should not become the property of one team, even if won more than once. Uh, And then four and five deal with how they name the trustees. But the point of it, as we said, was that it would be challenged for. So a team would have it, and then some other team would say, hey, we want to play you for that cup, uh, and they would agree to do so, and the winner would get the cup. Uh, so not necessarily an end-of-season thing or anything like that. <laughs> How great would it be if sports had like a Money in the Bank briefcase where they could just cash in whenever they wanted to? So like, you know, like – this past hockey season, it was who the Lightning and the Blue Jackets had like the nine overtimes or whatever. If yeah. as soon as that was over, someone came out and was like, "Hey, we're cashing this in." This guy right now <laughs> at the end of a four and a half hour hockey game. Yeah, you know, we've already been eliminated, but we want to take one of y'all's spots. Let's go. Right. Uh, first goal wins. <laughs> so that would would, be... would would that also count if Alabama wanted to challenge the Jets for the number one overall draft pick? <laughs> right. <laughs> we're just gonna go ahead and play. <laughs> But you know this isn't this isn't as weird as it seems. It is to us because we're Americans. We like American sports and hockey. But like European soccer has competitions within competitions. Sometimes within competitions, you're playing you know multiple things at the same time, right? You may play you know Manchester City may play Tottenham Saturday in a Premier League match. And they may turn around and play on Wednesday in the FA Cup. And if things break the right way in this weird scenario, they could turn around on the next Wednesday and be playing in the Champions League, right? So it's not as weird as it seems. It's very that's a very interesting uh that's a very interesting thing that European soccer does, and I'm a fan of it. What I don't the only thing I don't like about that though is that you can't you can't play your best players in every game. So you don't always get to see the best players on each team playing because you just can't play them that often. But other than that, it's just more sport to watch. Have y'all seen either of you seen this, uh, the stuff that goes around. It's basically in every sport. Now baseball, there's this mythical pennant Uh, college football has a championship belt that goes back to the very first game ever played. Uh, And then the NFL does some things too, but have y'all seen these things where it's not official but there's like Twitter accounts and Reddit pages where they award, you know, these mythical championships to things. Yeah. And I, I don't, don't for I don't, I don't know. Are, are you talking about like, would, would like the Carolina Duke bell that the football teams play for every year? That doesn't count. That's not what you're talking about, right? Nah, this is like, this is like, so uh, I can't remember exactly what the first like organized football game was, but I want to say it was like army Princeton or Princeton Yale or something like that. So the winner of that game, they say, is the the champion. And then the belt is up for grabs in every game they play after that. And so you just kind of track who wins it. And, um, yeah, I don't know who's got it now, but there's like a whole Twitter account. It's like the college football belt or something like this. Hmm. And it's not a real thing, but it does add a little bit of intrigue to the proceedings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. That was just for free, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the um, the first cup, as it would tend to happen more in the future, the first awarding of the cup was uh, steeped in controversy. The two trustees, whose job it was to oversee the cup and such, uh, just decided that the Montreal Hockey Club of the Montreal Amateur Athletic Association would be the first winners. They had won what they thought was the best league in Canada, the Amateur Hockey Association of Canada. Um, The problem is that hockey was being played at a high level in Montreal and in Ontario, and they didn't even pay attention to Ontario. They just gave it to Montreal and called it a day. Um, so as you would, that would create controversy. If if the politics of recent days has taught us anything, it's that when people are angry, they don't get along very well. Um, and that's what happened here. Uh, so they just, 
so 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 Stanley, I'm going to call him Stanley, like uh, like a Madonna or a Cher. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Stanley just decided that uh, I'm assuming he lived in Montreal or like that's where he watched hockey or he was actually on Ontario, dude, but he wasn't there. Fun fact. He left to go back to England before uh, the cup was ever awarded. What? Yes. Yep. Never saw a game in the stand, uh, a Stanley Cup game. Hmm. That's so weird. Right? Right? Hey, let me give you this cup. All right, I'm out. <laughs> well, he didn't even get he didn't even give it. He was like, "Hey, I think this league should have it." Here's So this, not him. Here's this so, bowl I found or bought yeah. from England. I brought it to Canada and now I'm going to leave before it ever gets presented. Yeah, so so not him directly. It's just these two guys that he appointed to be in charge of the cup. They they decided. So it Canada sounds, is a weird place. It sounds like his term as whatever he was ended. So it yeah. made it sound like the queen sent him back to England. Yeah, yeah, his term ended, and I read too that his he had a he had another title. He was a Duke of something, but he wasn't. His brother was. He was the Earl and, of Derby. There you go. Uh, his, I think his brother died, and so he had to go back to inherit the title of whatever, that Earl of Derby. So he probably intended on being there to present it, but, sure. but government called specifically his brother dying, and yeah. he had to go home. Yes. See, if they had just gotten rid of the queen like we did, it wouldn't have been a problem. Wa-bam. That's it. That's a weird alternate history, though, right? What if Canada actually gets rid of the Queen? There is no Governor General. There would be no Stanley Cup. Uh, so You're this welcome. kerfuffle, <laughs> this kerfuffle, if you will, between Montreal and Ontario caused the trustees to change the rules again, as you do uh, after the first uh, presentation. So they determined that the cup would automatically be awarded to the team that won the title of the previous cup champions league without the need for any other special contest. So they had given the cup to Montreal. If Montreal is successful in defending it and they, somebody else wins their league, that team automatically becomes the cup holder. They don't need to challenge for it. They don't need to play another game. They just win. Um, For other leagues, the team must be from what it was called a senior hockey association. Just meant that it was the upper level of whatever organization and the other teams in its league uh, were the upper level of their organizations as well. And they must have won their league championship. So if you were sixth place in Ontario, you could not just say, we would like to challenge for the cup, please. Uh, That would be turned down. Uh, So it was... It was a situation, this happened, that you played during the season, but you qualified for it by what you had done in the previous season by winning your league. So kind of like a Champions League, except much smaller because there's only one challenger to the cup, not like a whole round robin and then a bracket style tournament. Right. But there there were you know, over time, there became more than just two leagues. There were three and four and five sometimes leagues that all had champions uh, challenging for it. So sometimes a cup winner would play three or four of these challenges, but yes, there was no kind of bigger tournament to it. Yeah. They could be decided. Another thing similar to soccer, they could be a one game affair. Uh, They could be a two game total goals situation, or they could play a best of three series based on what the teams, both teams agreed to do and the trustees themselves. Um, and then let's see you know, the ticket receipt thing, how to appoint a referee in the rules, um, just your standard procedure there. And more importantly, a league could not challenge for the cup twice in one season. Don't know why they threw that in there, because if you had to win your league, then there's only one team that could challenge for it anyway. But there you go. I yeah, guess they weird. said if you lost, if you lost, you couldn't challenge again, I guess. Okay. Um, so there you go. That was the OG Stanley Cup. This this would be the part in the story uh, in school where I would say, what do you guys think happens next? <laughs> Aliens. So what, 
So what do you guys think happens next, though, for real? <laughs> it eventually has to come to America, right? At some point, Canada can never touch it again because their hockey teams are terrible now. But- Canada's bad, y'all. He said it. It's true. Canada can't play hockey. <laughs> um, at some point, they have a Zamboni driver for their own team who plays goalie for the other team and ends up winning the game for that team. But Shout out, shout out to David Ayers. Right? Kidney donor, David Ayers. But... Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't think at some point it's got to keep expanding until it becomes a, a thing. So, uh, yes, and, and it expands in a very predictable way. The, uh, the amateur goat, tell me if you've heard this before. There's this amateur athletic association that is just all the rage. People flock to see these games. They are highly entertaining. It becomes the pastime of an entire country. And then it is suddenly riddled with rumors of under the table payments and ringers and all kinds of other amateur ruining things. Have y'all heard that before? It sounds like an amateur hour up in here. (laughs) Yeah. So this is like the NCAA. This is the Olympics. This is everything else. They, um, the teams in Canada that were amateur, which was the point it was supposed to be for amateur hockey in Canada, the quest for the cup and glory and the competition led to some teams paying players, paying them under the table, hiring some ringers, Uh, particularly at the turn of the century in America first. And then in Canada, professional sports started to become a thing. So pro teams existed in America. If you're an amateur player in Canada, you can keep playing in Canada in front of your family, uh, in your hometown, playing for this cup, or you could go make some money in America. It's a pretty logical decision that you would make. And so uh, long about 1907, the biggest amateur league in Canada, uh, the East Coast Amateur Hockey Association, started allowing professionals. The last amateur team to win it was the Kenora Thistles. They are simultaneously the last amateur team to win and also the smallest community to have ever won a cup. I didn't... Find I didn't find the population of Kenora, uh, but it seeing how I never heard of the name before in my life, I'm assuming it was like a small farming village. That's very likely it'd be, though. It'd be like if uh it'd be like if if Spring Hope won the Stanley Cup. Like <laughs> <laughs> So in uh in twenty sixteen there was fourteen thousand people. So what year was that? 19, this was 1908. 1908. So 1911 was 6,100. Dang. <laughs> so they, they good enough hockey players in Kenora. That sounds like um, that sounds like a chapter out of a Malcolm Gladwell book right there is to go find the hockey players that are coming out of Kenora, Canada, wherever that is. Right. Those are outliers, right? Is that what he calls them? Outliers? Yeah, yeah outliers. Yeah. <laughs> That that would be that's incredible. Uh, technically, we're going to get into technicalities here. The Montreal Wanderers, who won the cup from the Thistles, are the last amateur team to win it. But their league allowed paid players, and so it's not written anywhere. It's written about in kind of hushed tones. They call them ringers. They just say, "Oh, a bunch of future Hall of Famers." Uh, trying to insinuate that they were paid players on the team. So technically they were the last amateur team, but they're, they're as amateur as the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, so. <laughs> so before it was Kenora, it was Rat Portage. That was their name right before they won the cup. It's Rat Portage? Rat Portage. It means the land of the rat, apparently. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> That's amazing. Oh. God bless Kenora. I would have changed the name, too. <laughs> Oh, God. As a result of all the professionals, the trustees acquiesced, uh, as you will find out as we go through the story, they are want to do. And they changed the rules uh, from the Stanley Cup being awarded to the best amateur team in Canada to being awarded 
to the best professional team in Canada. Uh, something called the Allen Cup took the place of the amateur prize. The East Coast Hockey Association is going to fold, and most of the teams are going to join the National Hockey Association. Our NHL fans will recognize that as the forerunner to our NHL. And then a team relocated to Portland. And the trustees for a second time acquiesced and said, okay, all right. So it was for amateurs in Canada, but now it's for professionals in the entire world. Let's go, people. And that's how we get to America. That's how we get to America. But still not the NHL. Still not the NHL. So there's one other piece to our story. Uh, Portland, unfortunately, did not win the Stanley Cup. And um, if you pay attention to the NHL, doesn't have a team. So that's sad for them. I was going to ask, who was the team in Portland? They folded over time. I did not write their their nickname down, uh, but they did not last through. And most of the teams that I would tell you about in the NHA, NHA don't last. Uh, that's why when the NHL starts talking about its history, it's like we have the original six uh, teams, mm-hmm. and those are the only ones that survived this whole progression that I'm quickly going to br- brush through here. So there were three professional leagues at the time, the Pacific Coast Hockey Association, the National Hockey Association, and the West Coast Hockey League. The PCHA and the NHA initially played a World Series type situation for the Cup. They just agreed, look, we're only going to challenge once. We'll challenge at the end of our seasons. Your champ, our champ, that's it. Winner gets the Cup. Um, And then the West Coast Hockey League showed up and was like, hey, we got pros. We want to play too. And so they allowed that. And the Pacific Coast Hockey Association folded after two seasons. And it became the what was now the West Western Hockey League versus what has now become the National Hockey League uh, in a one-on-one series. And as we know, the WHL folded in 1926 and left only the NHL to compete for the Cup. It happens in baseball, it happened in football, it happened in basketball. Same deal here, uh, where a bunch of leagues become one, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, research time. The Portland hockey team that was founded in 1914 and folded in 1918, their name was the Portland Rosebuds. So, shout out to our listeners in Portland who, over 100 years ago, had a hockey team. With a terrible... Yeah. <laughs> the fighting Rosebuds. <laughs> hey, they were just looking into the future uh, for for the TV show Shit's Creek, they knew that the Rosebud Motel was going to be a thing. It was going to be popular, so they just named their team <laughs> the Rosebuds. Very well. Since we got two Hurricanes fans on the pod, there was one time where the NHL control of the Cup was challenged in 1948. The NHL more or less pressured the trustees to a set of agreements that essentially make it so, as we alluded to at the front, that the NHL is going to be the one that gives the trophy, but the trustees still control it. It'll be housed at the Hockey Hall of Fame, but it still is the property of the trustees of the Cup. So technically, the NHL doesn't award it. Uh, The trustees do but they're just the only league that would play for it. The world hockey association, which hurricanes fans all know the hurricanes came from Hartford and the Hartford whalers originated in the world hockey association. Uh, They were an upstart league, much like the AFL and ABA were in their respective sports. And along the same time, they were, in markets the NHL had yet to tap. They had a big following, and they said, we should be able to play for the Stanley Cup too. Why can't we play for the Stanley Cup? The NHL, with the leverage in the situation, said that, you know what, we'll talk about it, we'll think about it, maybe we can put together a World Series type situation. That happened in the past. We'll be, we'll be glad to look into it. All the while, they were doing what they needed to do 
to be able to take over the World Hockey Association. Uh, and a group of their teams were absorbed into the NHL. So that ended that, um, which is the same thing that happened in the AFL and the ABA. So, I was going to say, that, that's not out of the realm of sports history. That happened pretty much to every major sports league in America at some point. It's crazy that those three sports, baseball had it earlier, but those three sports all had it in the, the 60s and 70s, like back to back to back, like challenger and absorbed. Crazy. Yeah, what a, what a weird time for sports, right? Yep. The NHL started calling its champions the world champions after that. You are the champions of the world, just like the rest of the American sports would do. But this came to be a problem. Uh, during the 04-05 lockout that unfortunately took away the Stanley Cup that year, there was a group of people in Ontario who challenged in Ontario's superior court uh, that the trustees had violated the original charter for the cup in making it an NHL specific thing. The court would eventually rule after the lockout had finished that that is true and that the cup should be open to any league and that the ch- the champions should not be world champions. So if you'll look at merchandise and official records and what they say on television you're always in the stanley cup playoffs and you're always the stanley cup champions you're never the world champs which kind of makes sense it's kind of like when uh, that that bothers me a little just in sports in general because if you didn't compete against teams from around the world then how can you be considered the world champions that's never made sense Especially with like Olympic sports, because you would think as long as the you know, like Olympic, you know, obviously there's no Olympic football, like American football. So I guess that'd be a little bit different. But there's Olympic hockey. <laughs> so somebody right. that's could, the world champion. Yes. Right. Like you think they could be like, we're the world champions, because you are. You played people, everybody in the world who sent people to the Olympics and you won. You didn't just play eight other teams and end up being the best one. Yeah, that makes sense. I get that. I get that. Uh, yeah, it, it is a weird thing, right? Like I would think only the NFL truly could call themselves the world champs, maybe baseball. Cause, but I don't know. You're right. I, I, I mean, the best pro teams are here, but not necessarily the best national teams in all those sports. I get that. I yeah. get that. It's weird when. They do that, like sometimes the Champions League. We're doing a lot of soccer for a hockey episode, aren't we? Uh, <laughs> sometimes the the Champions League winners they say they're world champions, and it's like pump the brakes there. Like soccer's played in every country in the world. Can you just calm down? Arguably, uh, though, Europe is the best league, just like like uh, America. America has the best basketball league and so forth. But sure. yeah, I get it. I get your point. Yeah, I'm with y'all though. I get it. So and that right, that that ends our story though, uh, the the story part how we get a high, amateur hockey trophy just for Canadian teams to be played for in a challenge ends up becoming the de facto championship uh, for the NHL. It is still true, by the way, that they can award that trophy to anybody they want to. Um, so the so the right trustee could come in and just be like. Sorry, NHL, we're bringing this thing back home and just yeah. like never award it to an NHL team again. It's well, especially if they had a lockout, um, they could go to Sweden or Russia or a junior team in Canada, I suppose, and award the cup to one of them. Yep. That would be one heck of a day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about some traditions. Let's do the fun stuff. Fun stuff. So, anybody? Anybody have a favorite Stanley Cup tradition? I think when I think of Stanley Cup traditions, you always think about like, you know, how everybody gets a day with the cup. You, and I know that's more of a recent tradition versus everything else. But um, I think that's really cool. Because what other sports organization or leagues or whatever, does everybody there get a day with it? A lot of times it's just, you know, it just sits in the, arena or stadium or whatever. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The commissioner of baseball called the, the world series trophy, a hunk of metal. So (laughs) (laughs) 
No hard feelings, but um, but yeah. I mean, if we're that, being honest, though, if we're being honest, Rob Vanford's an idiot. So, um, <laughs> the the uh, the OG tradition, the OG tradition. Uh, it's one like the Stanley Cup's cool to me because there are people like it's treated with prestige and respect and like we must shield our eyes from it if we've not earned it like all of that happens to give it some some gravitas but it's also like not a thing that people wring their hands and clutch their pearls about right like so the original tradition is to drink champagne out of the cup as a team like that's just what you do it's the first thing that some people would think about and it's the first thing that people did with it I think that's cool. It's a cool tradition because, I mean, it, it was considered a punch bowl at one time. So you would think like that, that may be where that may be where that tradition started is like, oh, it's a bowl. Let's like pour something in it and drink out of it. Like and people still do it today, which is cool. That's the most fraternity minded thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, we just won this trophy. What can we do? Let's drink alcohol out of it. Let's pour <laughs> alcohol in it and turn up. Like, if, it was, if that was like recent, you know, somebody will roll tide right before they did it. You know that was <laughs> part of the, uh, If you think that's the most fraternity minded thing, uh, I got one better for you. In 1905, a team from Ottawa had just won and was in their champagne drinking stage. And one of the players <laughs> challenged another player to punt the cup into the canal, just drop kick it <laughs> straight into the what? new canal in Ottawa. And he was like, I bet. And so he did. Uh, luckily, the canal was frozen solid. So it just slid into, it just slid on the ice and they were able to get it the next day. It did not get lost forever as obviously uh, it could have been. Well, so there, it, there's that. They probably could have covered it up if we're being fair though. Like, cause it, if, if the original one left after 1905 and they replaced it, like history could have easily wiped that and we would have never known. Yeah. It also got left by the Montreal Wanderers, the one, the team that I was speaking of that probably was pro but wasn't. They left it at a photographer's house. They're getting their team what? picture made, and they just left it there. And they were like, "All right, guys, let's let's go get some Sammies," and, uh, and <laughs> left the trophy sitting at the house. And when they figured out where it was, it actually got stolen. It had been held for ransom, and then. You know, eventually everybody's like, what? We don't have the cup? What do you mean? They found it back at the photographer's house where the, quote, lady of the house, unquote, uh, was using it as a flower pot. Okay, that's funny. That's the most, like, <laughs> m- that's the most, like, mom thing ever. Like, oh, here's a thing. I can put flowers in this. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Let me just plant it. It'd be nice in my window. Let's just plant it. It's fine. <laughs> Today you would plant like cilantro or parsley in it. You, it wouldn't be flowers. It'd be it would sit on someone's windowsill and have garden herbs, mm. like kale, yep. kale in it. Just grow kale out of it. It's funny. All people drink out of it because the last time the Red Wings won it, which was like I think '08, <laughs> one of the players' newborn daughter he put her in it for some reason. It was Chris Draper. And she um, she pooped in the cup. Or <laughs> 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 you want to say it into the actual cup? It says the cup was thoroughly cleaned, and then the guy drank from it that same day. Which Ooh. I don't trust anything <laughs> being oh. back. Like <laughs> I would give it to my friend the next time. Like, Here, it's your turn. Nothing happened to it. Let him drink out mm. of it. But I would never drink out of it myself. Oh, he didn't. He didn't play enough Oregon Trail as a child, <laughs> right? You died that's, of diphtheria. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you, <laughs> you died of dysentery. Like, come on. <laughs> um. So one of you, I think. Yeah, I'll, go ahead. So one of, sorry. One of the things I think of hockey is when, like, you know, the don't touch. If you win, the, what is it? The Prince of Wales Cup and the um, what's the Campbell one? Campbell Cup, right? It's Campbell 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 Cup, Cup, I think. Yeah. You don't touch those. And that's the funniest thing to me because it's like we were there when the team who shan't be named beat the Hurricanes in 2019 and won it. And they skated out. And I forgot, I think Char was the captain, skated around it and skated back. I didn't touch it or anything. But yep. 
if you look back at it, like there's a good history of people who touch the cup losing the game in like close series. They'll lose like six or seven. And then they, because they touch the little divisional trophy or conference trophy, they end up yep. losing the cup. It's crazy. I love that tradition. Like this is like this trophy is not the one we're playing for, so we're not picking this up. Yeah, that, that's I what I was it. gonna say. It has to be a it has to be a superstitious like, hey, we're not done kind of thing. Like when football wins the AFC or the NFC, like yeah, you want to celebrate, but you don't really want to celebrate because you know it's not over yet. But it's the only sport that does that. Like I love it. Like baseball in baseball, they 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 champagne celebrate every series win. Yeah. Um, which is cool too. But to not touch the trophy is just something fun. Doubling down on the superstition, the Tampa Bay Lightning last year uh won the cup. The time they were in the finals previously, they lost in the finals and didn't touch the uh championship the conference championship trophy. So last year when they won the conference championship, they were like, eh. So they grabbed it and like passed it around just to see if they could get the opposite luck. <laughs> worked well, out for them in that way. Yeah, so. Apparently it worked, right? That's awesome. I just love so, fun stuff like that about hockey. Like you don't really get a lot of that in other sports. Like, you know, baseball superstitious, obviously they're like crazy superstitious, but hockey's right up there with them. Like it's, I think in like 1940 ish, um, the Rangers burned the mass yes. third garden mortgage in it. And then they hadn't, they didn't win a cup for 54 years after that. Oh and they, like, my they, God. they were cursed. <laughs> they were cursed because they had desecrated. You now, like, it's weird because did they really desecrate the cup when we've, like, been drinking out of it and kicking right. it in things? But yeah, that's it. That's it. They desecrated the cup and so they could never win again. So if, like, if, the, if burning something was a 54 year drought, poor Red Wings fans, I don't want to tell y'all. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> letting somebody take a deuce in the cup is probably that's why they're that's why they're terrible now. That's what happened. Karma. This story is fun too. In 1993, uh, the Canadians were celebrating in Patrick Waugh's. That's a fun name, Patrick Waugh. They were in his pool uh, and they decided to see if the cup could swim. And Habs captain, because that's their nickname, and now I'm reading. But yeah, the Canadians captain, Guy Carboneau, uh, said the Stanley Cup does not float. Um, so not fun. Apparently, if you throw it in the water, you've got to uh, you got to swim down and, and pick up 35 pounds of of silver and get it out. Well, yeah. Who who on earth thought that something that weighed 35 pounds would just f- like no? It's not a boat. <laughs> Oh man, I'm just thinking about like the the difficult like that's got to be hard to get out of the water, right? Because it's a bowl, so it's like, yes, in in that a thing like it would be sucking water as you're trying to come up. That's a lot of weight. Like not, it's not Not. just 35 pounds underwater. Like you're also pulling it through water. You're generating resistance as you yes, a lot of resistance. So Mm. something cool, I uh, something cool that I find probably maybe the most interesting is all the times that... So there have only been four people who have ever been trusted to engrave the Stanley Cup. And every once in a while, they get it wrong. And I don't know why these are funny, because some of these have not been corrected. And these they're like decades old, and some of them have not been corrected. So some of the the better ones are a player named Dickie Moore. He won the cup six times and his name is spelled differently five of the six times. Like he has five different spellings of his name on the cup. Like, what are you doing? You know, somebody's going to be doing bad research and just looking at the cup names to determine who won it one day. And they're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is five different dudes. It's like five brothers. Yeah. D. So they they called him D. Moore, Richard Moore, R. Moore, Dickie Moore. And Rich Moore. That's how they spelled his name five different ways. Man. All um, the terrible names. So uh, similarly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a guy <laughs> similarly, a guy named Jacques Plante. If I spelled if I said that wrong, I apologize. But he won the cup five times in a row and his name was spelled differently every single time. 
I mean, I think after that point, you just kind of hope it's spelled different the next time, right? After like number two or three, you're like, how are they going to spell it when I win it this time? Let's see what happens. Well, yeah, then you win it and then it's the urgency to see, oh, well, how did they mess it up again? <laughs> right. Glenn Hall's name in 1951, 1952, G-L-E-N-N, was misspelled as G-L-I-N. Just, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, some team names have even gotten misspelled. So in 1963, the Toronto Maple Leafs were spelled L-E-A-E-S instead of L-E-A-F-S. Man. The Bruins in 1972 on the cup were, was spelled in all caps B-Q-S-T-Q-N instead of O's. Well, that's just because they were a Q follower. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's, so, the, <laughs> so in nineteen, also in 1981, the New York Islanders was spelled I L A N D E R S with no S in the in the between. <laughs> <laughs> Someone took it literally I Landers. That's funny. Your your beloved Justin Williams, Justin Williams, That's who wanted in twenty fourteen with the Kings, they spelled his name Justin Willivis. Hit the A in his last name turned into a V for some reason. <laughs> like, I get misspelling some of these like super Russian or like Norwegian names, but come on, Justin Williams. <laughs> like okay, so yeah. so I don't think it's being stamped by it, it's either being stamped by someone in Canada or in England. I think it's Canada. So French might actually might actually be their primary language. I don't know. But still, man, like, I don't know. I feel like they have a roster in front of them. That's, yeah. It's, just, are, it's <laughs> funny. To, it's comical. It's is there comical. So, there's someone like, there's someone sitting beside them like Justin, and they just have to figure out how to spell it. <laughs> um, another, another fun Hurricanes fact. In 2006, Eric Stahl, his last name had three A's in it. As if it didn't already have too many, they added a third one. <laughs> so it was S-T-A. A A L, oh, and but that yeah. I think it's that one was actually want. corrected. That was a correction that was made. So I think it's spelled correctly now. But originally he had three A's in his last name. Man. Also, Man. and the last one, Patrick Maroon had his name spelled differently in 2019 when he won it with the Blues as Pat Maroon. No, excuse me. 2019 it was spelled Patrick Maroon. And then last year, winning it with the Lightning, it was spelled Pat. So someone who just abbreviated his first name the last time. That's incredible. I don't know how you get those wrong. I don't either. I don't either. You got to love You got to love it. No spell check on the Stanley Cup. Another cool thing about hockey, though, is is that like, oh, another cool one was, um, sorry, last one. Uh, one of the names on the cup was later scratched out. A gentleman named Peter Pocklington, who's the former owner of the Edmonton Oilers, he put his father's name, Basil, on the Stanley Cup in 1984. Now, there's strict rules as to, like, you have to play a certain amount of games or you have to be on the roster for this amount of time or, you know, whatever, to get your name imprinted on it. Well, when they gave the person the list in 1984, the owner of the Oilers put his dad's name on the list. It was stamped on the cup. And then they ended up covering Basil, Basil Pocklington's name with X's, just capital X's. I'm sure there's a picture of it somewhere if you want to go look at it. But it's just <laughs> X's over every letter until it covered his whole name. He who shall not be named. <laughs> I think one of my another good story about it is like I think it was a couple of years ago. Um, like it was this has been pretty recent ish. I got the keeper of the cup was going somewhere and his car broke down. So he had a hitchhike with the uh I think it was two thousand eleven, yeah. He had a hitchhike with the cup. So how can you imagine like driving down the road, seeing a guy on the side of the road hitchhiking with a Stanley Cup? I think that'd be the only time I picked up a, a hitchhiker. I would pick him up. <laughs> like that's just insane. Would you pick him up? Would you pick him up or would you kidnap him? 
Just pick the cup up and just leave him there. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. it, it, I, would yeah. assu- I would assume that the cup was stolen and just take the yeah. cup from the person and drive off with it I think and then hold it for ransom and put flowers in it. I think it's like the Stanley, uh, the, the Santa Claus kind of situation where if you find it, you put it in your car, you become the keeper of the Stanley Cup. That's Ooh. how I would at least Honorary <laughs> trustee. <laughs> right, I'm the trustee now. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, that's just funny to me. Just good, oh, good stuff. The car broke down. I got to carry it with me. <laughs> yeah, that that's so bad. All right, so that's what uh, you guys don't know about the Stanley Cup. Anybody have uh, any anything else about the cup? Kind of last second shares. It's 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 one of the it's one of the more important trophies in professional sports because you know every other as you referred to earlier, is just being a hunk of metal. Every other league just makes a new one every year and they just hand it out like, you know, like someone handed out candy to kids or whatever. But this one is actually pretty significant. Um, Like they just kept making it taller and taller and taller until they finally decided to say, you know what, we can't make it any taller. We're just only going to keep a certain number of teams and names and winners on it. And then we'll take the oldest names off, replace them with the new band, and and keep those in the hockey hall of fame but it, it's a really really uh prestigious thing because of the age of the actual cup i think it's really cool it's it's probably the coolest trophy in all of sports it's also the most traveled trophy in all of sports just because it's been the same one since forever ago and everybody has a day with it so when you know, if you live in finland or whatever you can carry it to finland with you then you can carry it wherever you want to for that day so I think that's really cool. And if y'all, like you were saying, Blake, y'all should really go and Google. I think it's called the Stovepipe Stanley Cup. It's before they shrunk it down. That thing was like as tall as a person. It was fantastic looking. Definitely Google that. It's very fun to look at. Can you imagine trying to lift that over your head and skate around <laughs> an, an entire human person as a cup? That's cool. Cody, man, thanks for thanks for joining us. Yeah. Am I y'all's first guest? You're yes. the first guest. We'll send you a we'll send you a complimentary um, you know, I don't know, hug. something. Yeah, air hug. Uh-huh. <laughs> sure is, is, <laughs> is there anything you want to promote while you're here? Sure. I'd love to promote. If you like, you know, this fun banter, you be sure to check out me and another one of our good friends, Ross's podcast, Drinking Around Disney. We talk about the latest in Disney Park news and we make drinks and it's real fun. And maybe at some point we'll have y'all on it and we'll talk about some, I don't know, Disney sports movies. Vouch. I'm ready. I'm ready. I was told Extremely Goofy Movie was the number one pick and I looked at my wife like she was crazy. So I I don't think that's on my big board. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was holding my breath, but I don't think so either. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I don't think so, Tim. But we'll see. <laughs> All right, Uh, that's what you guys don't know about the Stanley Cup. Thanks for listening. Thanks, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of What You Don't Know About Sports. If you enjoyed what you heard today, please leave us a review, five stars only, please, and hit that subscribe button wherever you listen. If you have a great sports story, we want to hear about it. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at WYDKAS Podcast and on our YouTube channel at What You Don't Know About Sports Podcast. All episodes are written, recorded, and edited by us. Stay tuned for the next episode. You really did the what thing. Okay. I sure did. <laughs> oh, boy.